Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to take you through a calisthenics follow along workout. It's gonna be 20 minutes in total. It's gonna to include a warm up. We're gonna do some stretches at the end. And within the workout, we're gonna do some superset pairs of exercises. I'll give you technique tips throughout and you can just follow along with me. You can do this workout at home with minimal or no equipment. So we're starting off with a dynamic warm up. The first exercise is some inch worms. So hinge at the hip, reach down to the floor, walk out into a press up position, hinge back, walk all the way to your toes and then stand up. You're gonna do it five times. The goal is to keep your legs as straight as possible. And on that first initial drop, you're trying not to bend your back until you have to. If you need to bend your legs to get to your toes, that's fine, but try and minimize the amount of bend you have in them. On this fifth rep, you're gonna stay in the press-up position now. You're gonna take one foot on the outside of your little finger, give me a rotation once each way, and then switch your legs around. So you can put the other foot on the outside of the little finger, Turn each way once, pointing to the ceiling, and then keep switching. We're gonna do a total of three per side. Try and open out that upper back. You wanna straighten the back leg up as much as possible. This is a good hip mobility exercise, as well as opening out your T-spine and your chest. Now we're gonna go into a frog squat. So I want you to go into your lowest squat, slot the elbows in. We're gonna rock side to side, leaning into each ankle. We're doing five per side. You wanna make sure your heels stay on the floor. So you might have to have a higher hip position than that, but if you can, drop all the way down. Try not to hunch your upper back either. Pull your shoulder blades together, push your chest through your shoulders, and try and maintain good upper back posture. Next exercise, we're gonna do a squat to single knee drop. So you're gonna squat down, drop one knee to the mat and back up. If you're struggling with this, feel free to drop your knee onto a cushion. You can always pause the video and go get one. We're gonna do five per side. The goal is to keep one heel on the floor whilst you drop the other knee towards the mat. I recommend having your toes turned slightly out to start with. And as you get better at it, you'll be able to narrow your stance and uh, turn your toes in more. I'm also trying to keep the opposite knee pushed out. So on that foot that you're leaving behind, I'm trying to keep that knee out rather than collapse into the center. Here we're moving on to some tibialis raises. Put your tailbone against a wall, walk your feet away, lean forward, and lift your toes up, curling them as far as you can, and then drop them down. Hold a contraction at the top of each rep. We're gonna do about 15 reps on here. Try and get the shin muscles burning if you can. These are really important for helping you go into a low squat, helping pull your knee over your toes and maintain a great squat position. We're gonna warm the wrists up now. So kneel on your mat and do some forearm raises. You're gonna rise up, keeping your fingertips on the mat. And you're gonna come up onto the point where your fingers meet the palm. That's where you're gonna rest, tense the forearms, and then come back down. A really great way of warming up the forearm muscles, helping support your wrist. We're just gonna do 10 wrist circles each way. I like to keep straight arms for this. I'm gonna release a little bit of synovial fluid into the joints, helping them to glide easier and make the workout less stressful on your wrists. We're about to go into the workout. You may need a plate or a book or something to prop your heels up with for the first exercise. So feel free to pause the video and get that, or you might be able to do it without. We're gonna start off with some one leg down, two legs up pistol squats. So you're gonna come down with one foot, join the other foot and come up with two. 
If you find this too challenging, you can just go down with two, up with two, trying to maintain a nice upright posture. You're gonna do five all on one leg, and then you're gonna to switch to the other side and do five on the other side. If you're doing the two leg version, then just do 10 reps total and build up the strength nice and slow until you can do this more advanced one leg down, two leg up option. This will help build the strength for you to be able to go down and up just with a single leg. But I find this is a great training tool doing these negatives for building up that strength for a full pistol squat. I'm going to pair this exercise in a second with some pike push-ups and I'll show you those when we get to them. So with the pike push-ups I'm using some mini parallettes because I find it keeps a more comfortable wrist alignment. I'll put a link in the description if you do want to get some but you can do this whole workout without them. So you're going to come onto your tiptoes, you're going to draw down towards the floor, your head should meet the floor creating a tripod shape and you're going to push up in that straight line. If you can't push back up, just look at the little image in the side. I've done a negative to kneeling one. So you just go down with control and then drop to your knees and reset. But if you can do this full one, we're doing five reps and then we're going back to those one down, two up pistol squats. We're going to do two sets of each and then we're going to change the exercises. So let's go. We're going five on this. I'd like to do all five on one leg because I find it's a better workout. But if you are struggling, it is easier to alternate and you can still total five per side. Make sure throughout this exercise that on your supporting leg, the heel stays in contact with the plate. You want to spread your weight out between your toe and your heel with relatively even pressure. You definitely don't want the heel lifting and leaning too much into your knees. However, we do want your knee to come over your toe providing that your heel stays down. Also, don't let your knee cave to the inside. Most people will have to consciously put some pressure trying to push the knee out to the outside. So back to the pipe push-ups for five reps. Like I said before, you can just do a negative push-up on the way down drop to the knees and reset, or you can go for this full pike push-up variation. If you wanna make it more advanced, you could put your toes on the chair, just make sure it's sturdy and get a more vertical pressing position. Common mistakes are not having a tripod position at the bottom, so it'd be tapping your head between your hands is not what we're aiming for. We want your head to come in front of the hand position. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our next pair in 15 seconds. We're gonna do something called a reverse Nordic curl. So it's gonna be an exercise for your quads and some of your hip flexors. You're gonna kneel in a double kneeling position. You might want something softer under your knees. Engage your core, lean back. We're doing five reps. Don't worry how far you go on this exercise. Just keep your core tight, so no overarch in your lower back. You should keep a straight line. And you're pushing yourself back up. Should be mainly using your quads holding that good tight position. Don't worry at all about how far you go at first, just focus on keeping a nice straight alignment. After this, we're gonna go into a hollow hold. We're gonna do a 30 second hollow hold, a great core exercise. So come into this shallow dish position, keep your core tight. The whole point of this exercise is that your lower back is not arching off the floor. So if someone tried to get their hand in underneath your lower back, there should be no gap there for them to do it. If you're struggling, try bringing one knee into your chest or bringing your arms down by your sides. Okay, we're gonna go back for a second set. We're going to go back to those reverse Nordic curls. We're just going to do five reps of whatever range of motion you can manage. You can see me holding my hand on my stomach and my ribs, and that just gives me the awareness of whether I'm arching my back or not. So if I feel my hands opening out and drifting apart, it tells me that I'm arching my lower back. If my hands stay nice and close together throughout the whole thing, I'm keeping a good neutral spine position. Like I said, if you need to put something slightly softer under your knees, that's absolutely fine.
So we're going back into the hollow hold. Let's go. We've got a 30 second hold. If you want to make it easier, just close that hollow hold position slightly, lifting the legs and arms higher up. It'll still be challenging, but it'll be a bit easier to keep your back flat. Or you can bring one knee into your chest, hands down by your side. As long as your lower back stays flat to the floor, you should be doing a good job with this. And relax. We've got a short break before we go on to the next pair. The first exercise is going to be push up to knee tucks. You can do a kneeling variation, which will pop up in a box as a demo, or you can follow me for the full variation. You don't need the parallettes, you can have your hands flat on the floor, but if you've got them, feel free to use them. So we're going to go down into a push up, and then you're going to push up, draw one knee up and under your arms, and then back down. You're going to alternate legs. You're going to do 10 push-ups in total, so you get five knee tucks per side. You can see that I'm leaning my shoulders forward, almost trying to get a planche-style push-up, and that knee tuck is also working some planche-style core strength. Next, we're going to do some hip circles. This is a surprisingly difficult exercise. You're going to sit as upright as possible. We're going to do 10 circles each way. So we're going to go 10 one way, and then on the same leg, you're going to do 10 back the other way. If you want to put your fingertips on the floor to make it easier, that's fine. But the goal is to sit as upright as possible and as forwards as possible, compressing that center space. Once you've done 10 each way, you're going to do the other leg 10 each way and then we'll go back onto those push-up to knee tucks. There's 10 total, five per side on the push-up to knee tucks, alternating legs. Feel free to do that kneeling variation. And relax. Next pair is going to be something called a reverse plank. You're going to march your legs in whilst doing it. And we're also going to do something called a candle raise. Don't worry if you don't know what they are, I'm going to demonstrate them as we go. So for the reverse plank, you're going to put your hands behind you. You're going to pop up so you get a straight line. And then we're going to alternate legs in. You're going to do five per side. Try and keep your glutes engaged. Keep your hips high. We're trying to maintain a straight line from your shoulder down to your heel. You might feel your hamstrings cramping up. It's very intense. You can try that bridge variation on the screen. It's a little bit easier on the hamstrings, but it's actually harder on the shoulder mobility. Next up, you're going to go for those candle raises. So you're going to tuck your knees to your chest and then pop up to the ceiling. You can push off your hands, that's perfectly fine with this exercise. What you're trying to do is when you shoot your feet up, you're not trying to shoot them up over your head, you're actually trying to shoot them up more over your collarbone. So you're going directly up 
rather than going over your head like you're doing a backwards roll. And when you extend your legs out straight, you should maintain that flat back position that you were practicing in the hollow hold. Struggling with this straight leg position, have a go at that tabletop position that I'm showing on the screen now. Like I said, it's hard on the shoulder flexibility, but it's a lot easier on the hamstrings and it's easier to keep your hips high. Well done, that was the last rep. We've got some stretches now. I know it's quite a fast paced workout, but keep repeating it. You'll get smoother, stronger, and be able to move on to the more advanced variations as you go. We're gonna start off in a half kneeling position for our first stretch. We're gonna get some hip flexor and quads in. Try not to overarch your lower back. If you're struggling to hold onto your foot, you can put it up on a sofa or a chair instead of holding onto it. If you did enjoy the workout, please do take a second to hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Also comment, let me know how you found it, which exercise did you find difficult, which ones did you enjoy, um, I'll get back to you on that as well. And uh, if you're enjoying the content, do subscribe, check out some of my other videos, there's loads of follow alongs on here. Alright, let's switch to the other side, so again grab the back foot or put it on chair. What we're trying to do is avoid any overarch in the lower back. So you've consciously tuck your ribs away for this, making sure you feel a good stretch down the quad. If you tense your glute on that right leg, you'll feel an even better stretch. Okay, we're gonna go on to a hamstring and hip stretch now. So you go into this 90-90 position, extend the front leg out. I like to tuck the back leg in a bit as well. And then you can be as open as you like. So if you just bring your knee and your heel further away from one another, you'll increase the stretch. I'm also trying to posture upright and then lean my chest forwards over that quad. You might feel it in the hip on the back leg or you might feel it in the hamstring on the front leg or maybe a bit of both. Okay, we're going on to the last stretch now. We're just going to do 30 seconds on the other side. So slow your breathing down, try and let your muscles relax, posture upright and lean forwards. Like I said before, I do appreciate if you could hit the like button. Also, put in the comments whether you liked it or not. Um, I do read the comments and I'll get back to you. So let me know how you found it. Also, check out my other videos. There's loads that will complement this well. There's some flexibility follow-alongs if you were struggling with flexibility on these. And hopefully I'll see you again soon.